Can you tell us what happened on a 62-yard return? Can you tell us, break down what happened and what needs to be changed in order to stop that uh, large return like that again? Yeah, uh, you know, just one of our players got out of position on one of them. Um, the first two, we were all doing our job, got in the right position right there, started them at the 16, then started them at the 17 plus the penalty, so they were inside at the 10. It was just out of position against a very dangerous returner and Cavante Turpin right there. And, you know, it's one of those learning experiences right there where luckily, you know, it didn't kill us in terms of the end product of the game. The defense did a great job of stopping them for three right there. So very fortunate of that. But from a special team standpoint, we can't have any of that. Giving up three points, especially off the ebbs and flow of that game was going. They weren't really doing much on terms of their offense, in terms of field position, because we were helping out in that in that sense as well. So it's one of those things where you're, you're always grateful to have another opportunity to go back out there and, and correct it and everything. But it was just, you know, a, Kyron, that first kickoff right there, made a heck of a play. Nakobe, the second kickoff, made a heck of a play. The third one, they caught us, you know, being aggressive, got head up. And, you know, Cavante coming out of TCU, he was one of the really good returners coming out there. And he had, you know, some stuff off the field. And he stuck his foot in the ground, got outside of us. And he, sh he showed why he's a, he he's a dangerous returner right there. On the Aaron's punt um, late in the game, the one that uh, – Went out of bounds at 12 as a 30 yarder. How do you feel about that? Is that okay, or is that do you want, do you want something better there? No, uh, situational football right there. You can see how dangerous number nine is, and he was probably he was probably going to try and return that even out in the end zone right there. And you know it, it's something that that Aaron and myself and you know Tyler and all the special teams coaches talk about is putting something on film that we know. Uh, he's not going to really try to return right there. I mean, obviously that late in the game, and you still got to make him go 88 yards. All right, you, you, you'll bite the, the net average all, all day on that one. He had, he, he had one of those, uh, we like to call them banana balls right there, where it's flailing away from them to the right. So it may look weird on TV or at the naked eye if you don't know what you're looking at, but it's going to definitely get those returners to not really attempt to catch that ball. If they do try to attempt it, it's going to be tough to catch it. So it was one of those things where situational football where we could actually affect how the returner is going to catch it. Uh, we talked about it, and if they got to go 88 yards in whatever that time was, two and a half minutes, three minutes right there, in a two-score game, I think we uh, we were settled on that, and I thought he did a good job with it. Is that Aaron's decision, or did you call it? We, we always communicate it right there. I'm not the one going out there playing, but I'm also the one that has to look over this and make sure it's the right call. And we communicated. We talked about it for an extensive amount of time right there, and we both felt good about it. And the cool thing is Aaron did it again, did it earlier in, in the Arizona game and it landed at the seven-yard line um, right before the, the the first half had ended. So it's not something that he had never done before. And it's all, all these things that we do do, we work on. It's not like... We're going out there, and let's try it the first time out there. So it's, it's stuff that we do work on. I will never try to put these guys in a, in a situation where they've never done it before, whether it's in practice or in a game. So it's one of those things where we were talking about it, communicating about it, and we felt good about it. What are the, uh, the primary points of emphasis for you during this, this self-scout week? Like, what's, what's top of mind for you? Uh, you know, just to review everything. You always want to see what your tendencies are, what, what you're calling at certain field positions, whether it's pump return or pump, which way you're going. Um, finding different techniques, going back to, you know, how to help these guys get off blocks, how to get, get our, uh, our blocks going right there. So it's just really, you know, peeling back all the layers that are going to help them with all this time that we do have, you know, not really – um, getting too far ahead into into Pittsburgh and everything, just really looking back, say, hey, what's what's working for us, what's not working with us, how can I improve myself in terms of telling these guys, let's improve in this to get better at that. Um, so it's just really taking everything in, in, into consideration, looking back at it, stripping it down, then let's see what we can build on. You know, when we come back off the bye week. Last year you had that punt block against Carolina. You identified something that you could take advantage of. Have you? Had any punt block calls on that maybe we're not aware of, you know, these first six games uh, it didn't work? Yeah, we always carry, you know, some sort of punt block going into the week. Um, it, like I said, a lot of it comes down to situational type things where um, is it the right down and distance? Are we in the right spot right there? So it's always one of those things. And, you know, you're never going to get a – you're not always going to get a punt block or, you know, sometimes you just want to speed up the punter right there. Um, where he's not being able to take his time and get a good punt off. So sometimes you just want to get around his feet right there. So there's times where, you know, we are going to be, we are going to be aggressive and try to get, you know, a pump walk or get around the punter's uh, feet to, uh, to speed him up right there. So we, we always catch some, have something with us that we can uh, go into week in, week out. How was the game? And what's the 
I mean, it's uh, with Jake um, the week prior, getting getting back to his rhythm and everything. Um, you always felt good about it when he's talking about how good he feels. Um, we kind of sensed that Wednesday afternoon, Thursday. Then, I mean, he goes out there and doesn't miss a beat. I mean, he had a huge 51-yarder right there to make it a three-score game. Um, nothing really kind of kind of rattles his cage out there. He's for all three of those, Rick, Aaron, and uh, and Jake right there. So him, them being able to operate, we were able to get that 51 yarder. Them able to get that short one right there. Where at times, you know, if you get lax a days ago, you may push it or you may uh, hook it right there. So he, I mean, he's as locked in as ever can be, and you know, he's just one of those really good kickers that you're happy to to be on his team. Look at the special teams unit as a whole. I mean, you've had two guys who've been special teams player of the week and everything. I mean, where where do you? Like, where do you see the potential? I mean, it obviously seems like you have a lot of young guys here who are, you know, make some mistakes but are also learning. Is that kind of how you see it so far? Yeah, everything, you know, every, this whole thing's never a finished product. Um, it's always going to evolve. Um, guys are going to get better. Um, it's, it's one of those things where it's, it's always growing, and hopefully it's always growing in a positive manner. Um, you go, you you go out there and you try to get these guys in the right possibility, the right situation to succeed at their biggest um, levels, right there. And there and there is times where these young guys are out there playing, playing some heavy minutes for us, especially going and making big plays. Um, but regardless of the situation, the outcome, we're out there to try and help this team win, regardless of the the score, the time of the game, who we're playing against. So it's one of those things where we got to keep growing and kind of uh, eliminate those 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 bad plays, you know, week in and week out, right there. But we got to get after it, and these guys are always working right there. It's always nice going into the bye week, you know, being six and zero. It's hard to win in this league, but we're always going to keep growing. It starts with myself and, and Tyler and Joe P upstairs, you know, with the self scout then presenting it when they come back in for Pittsburgh. But, you know, there's going to be some growth out of everyone. Um, you can see guys right now, N'Kobe's, he's playing a lot of special teams minutes and he's excelling in it. Kyron, you know, as, as bad as it may look, you know, in, against that kickoff return against Dallas, I mean, he's tied for fifth in the NFL with six tackles as a rookie. Um, there's guys, Zach McPherson's the second, uh, second year guy going out there, making some big plays on the outside, handling, you know, I think one of the hardest positions being a, a vice guy against a gunner. Um, going out there one-on-ones, taking the challenge to, to try and stop one of their better players out there. So it's always going to be a growth process, you know, regardless of offense, defense, special teams. So we're going to just uh, keep getting at it and keep getting better and better. There's a lot of attention that usually goes like on a kickoff, especially when it comes to the outside guys. But when it comes like to those L1, L2, R1, R2 guys, how well are like guys like Sean Bradley and all those guys playing in the middle of the, in the middle of the kickoff cover? Yeah, uh, and again, you know, we can't allow, allow that 63-yarder ever. Um, regardless of it, but from the top down, from the perimeter guys um, to the interior with, with Sean, Kayvon, um, Andre, Boston's on our, our kickoff coverage team. They're doing a good job. The run with speed. You saw in that second one the physicality that Patrick Johnson and Sean Bradley um, came with it on, the, on, their, on their return. Sean had a number 34 waiting to try and block him in the hole right there, and, and he button pressed him, and he kind of ran him into the running lane and made Cavante stop his feet. So he's playing with some some aggression and some violence that we need to add of him. Um, but it, it all starts from everybody else. We talk about speed and, and physicality, going speed to power, and making these guys stop their feet to allow the rest of us to corral and try and get the ball off of them or make a big play inside the 20.